in reverence to the word of the Lord. Less than up at this time. Let's open the word of the Lord and Second John, the New Testament. Uh, chapter 6. We're going to read some um, verses. Jesus is the bread of life for those who believe. So we're going to start reading from this verse. Six from verse starting at verse twenty-two. <coughs> uh, John six twenty-two. It says, "The next day, the crowd that had to stay in the opposite uh, shore of the lake realized that only." One boat had been there, and that Jesus had not been entered with his disciples, but that they had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the people had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Once the crown realized that ne neither Jesus nor his disciples were there. They got into the boats and they went to Cap uh, Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said, Rabbi, uh, where, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, you're looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the bread that I feel, that I have filled, do not work for the food that is spoils, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of a Man will give you. For on Him, Lord, Him God the Father has placed His seal of approval. Then they ask Him. What must we do? What must we do to do to the works that God requires? God answered, "The, the work of God it is to believe in the one He has sent." So they ask, "What sign, then, will you give that we might see it and believe you?" What will we do? Our ancestors ate the manna and wilderness. And it is written, he gave the bread from heaven to eat. Uh, verse 48 now. I am the bread of life. Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. Yeah, they died. But here is the bread that comes from heaven, which anyone my eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of this world. Uh, verse 56. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so one who feeds on me will live because of me. Uh, verse 63. The Spirit, it is life. The, f the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you are the full of the Spirit in life. Uh, verse 67. Uh, you do not want to leave it too, do you? Jesus asked to the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the word of eternal life. We have to come to believe and to know that you 
are the Holy One of God. Oh Lord, we we pray and we thank you for everything you have done and all the benefits because of being grown for your life. We thank you for your word that it could be given us a blessing. And we know that you're going to be operating. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The brothers may be seated. The word says that Jesus had he had made a really great sign. A sign that Jesus had made was the multiplication of bread and fish. And all those who ate those, those breads and fishes, they were full. All of them, with not even an exception, all of them were blessed. All of them left that place full. Jesus killed the hunger of everyone there. But the word says that the next day, Jesus was not there anymore. He was not present. And in the next day, all that people were hungry again, all of them. And for being hungry, for for before after taste, tasting the bread, after seeing that Jesus filled them up, so they started searching for blood. So they were searching for Jesus and the the place they didn't find, and then they realized that Jesus he went to another place, and that Jesus was in Capernaum. That means um, comfort. And the word says that that crowd that ate the bread, the the bread that was full because of the bread and it was blessed by the food they came into the Lord and the Bible says my brothers when they were on the other side with Jesus <coughs> they asked Jesus oh why the boats, the boats uh, with the disciples, you, you were not there. The other boats, you were not there either. So, how did God here? So, they wanted to know how God appeared in that place. And uh, the Bible doesn't say how Jesus got in that place. This is interesting. No one knows how to explain um, why Jesus showed in that place. And sometimes we have to ask why Jesus was here. Why is Jesus here? What is the answer for that? The answer was that Jesus was there just like Jesus is here to bless us. And the word says, my brothers, the following. Jesus looked at the crown that had eaten the bread, the roof full, and they say, look, truly, truly, he uses uh, the word truly twice. That's interesting. He says and then he confirms himself. And, and one of the, the gifts of the Lord is the truth. The truth of the Father, the truth of the Son. So what he was saying there, it was, it was the truth. And the man, when seeks the Lord, he seeks because of the bread. He seeks the Lord because men want a blessing. The man wants salvation. Man wants a door open, a cure, because of this, because of that, because man needs something. So they always go to the Lord because they know that Jesus is going to fix their problems and Jesus resolves their problems. Just like it says, those who come to me, I will send it back with the answer. 
So that's what he did with the other crown. So the the crown is hungry. They need. So let's fix the problem of the other crown. Let's bless everyone. Let's give food for all of them. And he says, my brothers, those who look at me not for my signs, you'll see. Not, not because of the sign, but because you ate the bread, the bread, and you were full. And that's interesting. The people were not looking for Jesus because of the signs. And, um, and Jesus says, And those signs will follow those who believe. But the people, they were not looking for Jesus because of the signs. There's a song that we sing that says, The signs in the end will become true. And this generation, all everything will come apart. But, G but the people was looking for Jesus because of the bread, not because of the signs. And here, my brothers, uh, Jesus was, was saying that the sign is more important than the bread. The cure that Jesus operates in my life, in your life, the open door that Jesus opened, all the signs that Jesus does in anyone's life, the blessing, it is not as important as the sign. What is the sign? It is the sign that you, my brother, my sister, you were chosen to be blessed. The the blessing is a detail. The it's not important the blessing, but what is important it is the blesser. So you're looking for the bread, you're looking for the blessing. So you're you're looking at the the plan of the Lord for your life. So that's what Jesus was saying. The people of Jesus. The word says the two disciples, Simon and his brother Andre. They were in the boat and Jesus passed by. Oh, they were fixing the net. And Jesus passed. And they told him, Oh, follow. And they left the net and they followed Jesus. They understood that follow, following Jesus was more important than the net. Net was to fish, was to sustain in their house. But better than that, better than the net, better than this thing right here, right, is Jesus. Because Jesus is going to sustain me every day of my life. After he called another two brothers. Oh, it was uh, Tiago and John, another two disciples. Those disciples that were in the boat, that it was from their dad. And when Jesus passed by, those two disciples, they left the boat of their dads. They left the dad, and they followed Jesus, because Jesus, for them, was more important than the boat. And it was more important than the biological father. Because if they follow Jesus, they would see the celestial father. Later on, those four disciples were fishing. They didn't catch anything. Jesus said, look, let's do like this. Follow my directions. Go through your nets again. And the word says that the nets were full with many fishes. What a blessing, huh? Hallelujah. God operated. God blessed. God gave me, gave me everything that I needed. Now I have many. Ooh, let's open all the... The silos. It was good. I have sufficient for this life. Go eat. Eat my soul. Now I'm gonna rest. 
Mas aquela vez, But aquela grande bênção, that, those fishes, that great blessing, um was a sign. And the disciples, they understood that. Oh, this thing, it's a sign. This blessing is not important. What is important is who gave that blessing. The altar. When Peter saw that thing, it was huge. He said, Oh Lord, get rid of us. We're sinners. He understood. He's like, I'm here in front of God. The only one who did this was God. And Jesus said, Don't worry. I'm not going to get rid of you. I'm going to stay with you. And do you know what they did? The disciples? Those four disciples? The Bible says, So they left everything. They left everything to follow Jesus do you know why because everything without Jesus is nothing and with Jesus I have everything because Jesus is my shepherd and I won't need anything that was a sign so the people was looking for Jesus not for the bread so it has to be through the signs and Jesus comes and says, work. Let's work. We're going to work. Not for the food that we need. We're not going to do this. There's a text that says, uh, look first for the things of God and the other things will be added. For first... Oh, here we're, we all, we all care about the food, right? The precious. Oh, we're talking about me too. Isn't, isn't that right? But let me tell you something. Don't work for the food, the precious. Because the food, the precious, it ends. One day it will end. One day everything goes away. But he says, But But, but work for the food that it stays for the eternal life. So he's talking about two two foods. A food for this life and a food for the eternal life. A food from the earth and for the celest celestial, for heaven. So he says, work for the food that you don't need. Because the food that perishes, Jesus all in the, the sermon of the mountain was looking at, at the heavens it, it, didn't, it did not gather in the side and after uh, Jesus told the crown is there more value than them? Does a man, does a man have as much value to the Lord as everything else? So, Lord says, don't worry. And here Jesus says, work for the food that stays for eternal life. And it says, and this food that stays for eternal life, who's gonna give is the son of is the son of man. So it's gonna be me, Jesus. I'm gonna be the one that's gonna give you. I'm gonna be the one that's gonna be considering this food, and it is for free. You don't have to pay anything. 
Why? Because the price was already paid for him. This food is for free. And he says, What is interesting is that when he gets on this point, the speech of Jesus and the crown, uh, the people were saying to Jesus, What are we going to do to to ex to make to do the the work of the Lord. So they ask a question. Oh, what are we gonna do to do the do the to do the work of the Lord? Many people ask, what is the work of the Lord? What is the work of the Lord? And Jesus here he answers, what the work of the Lord is. The work is to believe in those who created you so when is man in the work of lord so when man is believing and when the man believes that jesus is the messiah the savior of the of the world jesus the jesus the savior he's the one that god sent and who god sent or uh, god sent jesus so when he speaks about Jesus, he's talking about the work of the Lord. And the, the crown spoke to, to Jesus and asked, What is the sign? What is the sign that you've done so we could see and believe in you? What do you operate? So now they wanted to know what kind of signs Jesus was doing. Oh, you're talking about sign? Uh, so what's going to be the sign that you're going to be doing so I can believe on you? This one, the one that is talking to me in front of the crowd. You are the son of God. God could have said many things. Let's say, oh, I've cured uh, blind people. I freed them. I gave the freedom to a man that was dead. I've res I've resurrected. I just did this multiplication of bread and fish. So I approached the seas and the winds. That was a sign. But, but, but he's not talking about those signs. He's gonna talk about the signs that's related to bread. He says, Your father ate the manna in the desert. The manna. The manna in the desert was was known as the bread that came from heaven. Your fathers ate the manna from heaven. The manna. So the manna in the desert was a sign. The people there when they left Egypt to the permitted land on the time of 40 years of the altar so Jesus gave the bread every day it was the manna that will fall every morning so the sign is the manna the manna that people ate and they were full but they didn't know that the manna was a manifestation, was a sign, was the evidence, it was a prophecy. <laughs> Through the our Lord Jesus Christ, the one that would be used to to satisfy the the hungry of the the men. Yeah. But they didn't understand that the manna over there was a prophecy through uh, talking about the man that was talking to the crown it was a prophecy of Jesus that's why he says I'm the bread that came from heaven it's not the the bread that falls from heaven the the bread he was sent by Lord he was he was brought down by the heaven some people say, oh, the fall, the, the bread fell from heaven. So if, if they say, oh, the bread fell from, from heaven, run away. Because everything that 
fouls from having is not something good. So Jesus didn't fall from heaven. He came down from heaven. So, so the bread, it came down from heaven. So then he talks about the mana. He talks about the food. The food that is present in the life of Israel. Through all the generation. All the walk in the desert. So my brothers, Jesus is present in the middle of the people every day. So Jesus God and satisfied the hunger of everyone. So if if we only need Jesus for this life, we're one of the last needed, most miserable. But Jesus is gonna take us out of here. He's gonna give us a new life, a life in eternity. And he says. Because the bread of life was the one that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then it is the real bread of the Lord. Jesus is this bread that comes down from heaven that was sent by God to give us life. This life that we have, my brothers, my sister, it is a a life that after seven years it's done we can count we can count the lives of a, a person in only a sentence oh he was born on that day he died on that day so Jesus is talking about life but our eternal life a life that doesn't end it doesn't have an end and more than that a life of peace a life of happiness I've come to the a life that doesn't have Christ, doesn't have a war, doesn't have affliction, doesn't have depression, it doesn't have sickness. Don't you want this life? I want this life. I want this. And then someone was asking me, "Oh, when are you going?" Oh, I think I think I don't go. I don't go past by sixties. Oh, why? Because uh, be why? Because Jesus is coming. Oh no, because I just want to go. You know, I want to go to another life. So he talks about this manna. Lord talks about this manna. And those who doesn't eat don't die. I'm the live bread that comes from heaven and those who eat the bread will live forever and will be the flesh of the life that will give to the world so he's talking about what food that sustains the man for his for all his life it is better than any blessing it is the blessing is the presence of the blesser in our life because the blessing sometimes it goes and it ends but a good blessing it stays forever. And Jesus talks about this. Oh, uh, eat the flesh and drink the blood. Coming back to Israel, when the people of the Lord was coming out on the last day, and the, the signs were shown, the, the ten signs. So he says, oh, uh, blood in the, in the doorposts. So on the outside of the door, there was the sign that it was blood on the the doorposts. And inside the house, there was the body of the sheep. It was the food. So we know that Jesus protects, protect. He he's the shield. He's fortress. He's a servant. He's the one that frees us from all bad things. But he's also the food for our lives, for our eternal life. So Jesus, here he's presenting himself as this sheep. 
and how in the past people used the blood and used the blood of Jesus. He says, Lord, I'm the son of life. Who drinks my blood and eats my flesh will live forever. And he was saying something that was spiritual. Because he asked the Lord to eat the flesh and drink the blood. Why did he ask for the, for the people to eat the bread? And the Bible says, we live for him and for him we'll make our homes. So he wanted Jesus to accept his project, to, to try and taste the bread of life that him, Jesus, he wanted to be inside of the man. The blood outside to protect and inside the, the food. So he was, he was talking about the life of Jesus and the life of the man. That is the project of the Lord to eternity. So when Jesus looked at me, he wants to see two, two things. If I drank the blood, if I ate the flesh. If he looks at me and see the Holy Spirit is upon his life, my word, it is inside of him. So, if so, he has part of me. So, those who have drank my blood and ate my flesh, it is part of me. So, for those, so I could stay, and those who believe in me, and those who believe in me can stay with me. So, that's why they call Emmanuel. That's why he's called Emmanuel. Is God, it means God with us. It is our hope to go to eternity. So, he's talking about those things, the project of the Lord, to the life of men. So, how in the past people didn't a um, uh, ground meat. So, So, if you want Jesus in my flesh, in my reason, nothing's, nothing's gonna happen. The project of God won't, won't change anything in my life. Because it is the flesh. Because the, the human thought, it doesn't help. But the word gives life. The word of the Lord is a word that gives life that is brought through the Holy Spirit. And he tells more. He comes to the, his disciples. And they were going through a difficult time. So Jesus, he, he comes to the disciples and said, Oh, don't you want to go home? Don't you want to leave? But the disciples, they said an interesting thing. For who will, uh, will we follow? I left the net. I left my father. I left the boat of my father. I left all those fishes behind all that blessing that you gave us. There is no way that I can come back from that. And there is a verse in the Psalms that says, Where would I go without you? Or where would I hide without you? And the next verse says, Here with his, light, his hand will sustain me and he will guide me. So my portion, my my life, I already I already gave to the Lord. Where would I go now? Go where? If Jesus was there, 
If the multitude of the if the crown left the city to go to another one just because Jesus was there. So if Jesus is here, also with Jesus, where will they go? Where can the people go without Jesus? To where? But where does people where does man go with Jesus? He goes to eternity. And what did the disciples want it? They wanted eternity. And then he says, We have no place else to go. Do you know why? Because the Lord Jesus Christ has word of eternal life. Every word of the Lord, every manifestation of the Lord through Jesus, all those signs, it is to show to me, to you, to show the humanity, to show to the man. The man that Jesus has eternal life, and that the word of Jesus, they are words of eternal life. He says, and we have believed and known that you are Christ, the God, uh, the Son of God. My brothers, what great thing to say when man has this understandable that he's he's talking about Jesus he's talking about Christ and Christ has a place for us in eternity and he says we have believed that the word of the Lord because the Lord the word of the Lord is to believe on the one that God sent so we have believed so we are in the work of the Lord so that's what he's saying and known, why known? Because all the signs that I've seen give them the understanding and the give them the understanding that Jesus, right there, was the Son of God, was the Christ, the Savior of the world. There's no place else to go, because I'm already with Christ. I'm already in the presence. Of the Savior of the earth. So that's what they said on that day. They understood all the project of God to their lives. When Jesus was returning to eternity, he made a prayer. He made a prayer. You know, later on in John and verse 17, he says, Because I gave you the, those words. That you gave me, and they received and have truly believed that what comes from you believes that believes that I was sent. Peter and more disciples said, "We believe and we know that Jesus, and Jesus uh, later on, he agrees with the word of the Lord." says oh this this crown right there he really know what it comes from me and he really knows who i am so he's part of the word and the lord have shown tonight a man and this brother he he came from a place that it was just like a war So we could see that it was a war, and everyone here was treated. But there was a man that came here, and he had injured his thumb. This finger is really important because without this finger, I cannot hold hold it right with the. I cannot hold, let's say, the blade. That is the word of the Lord. So everything that touches here, it will fall. So with this finger right here, it will close and I could actually hold. So it is a person that lost his faith, lost his security. It is an injured soldier. It is a soldier, but he's injured. It is a servant of the Lord. 
but you haven't been you haven't been understanding the plan of the Lord through his life and tonight Jesus is doing this he's restoring his life so his so his name could be glorified this is a sign the bread is a sign the blessing of your life is a sign everything the Lord has have done was signs so they could believe that man is not alone that Jesus is not refreshed for one day but for every day it's not one day to receive a blessing no the blessing of the Lord is a detail what is important is that one day I met Jesus and one day I decided to follow him one day I understood there is no place else to go besides go to the feet of the Lord where would they go the spirit where would I hide where would we go so the, the Lord has words of eternal life Let's sing a song. Amen, hallelujah. Glory to God. The church might be standing up at this time. We adore you, Lord. We glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, for one more time in this fellowship, for all the intimacy that we have with you. One more time to be present in this place. Through, the, through this person, your son, Jesus Christ, we glorify your name. 
We thank you, Lord, because you have been with us every day in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for the service for these people that are here. And we, and we thank you, Lord, and we ask for this brother, for this brother that could still fill our lives until the day that we go to eternity. Bring us safety to our homes. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we say that the blessing of the Lord, our God and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of Father, the gold and the good and the sweet consolations of the Lord could be upon us now and forever. Amen. Other brothers may be seated right now. So our service, it's over. So you, the, it is with us. If you want a prayer for your life, or for a understanding, a bad understanding for the word, or for the gifts, just raise your hand and we we'll, and will assist you. <coughs> and you're welcome to come more. And we have services on Wednesdays, um, Wednesdays for the women's, on Tuesdays for doctrine, Thursdays for prayer, Saturday night. Monday, um, Sunday mornings, and Sunday at night too. Everyone's welcome. Just raise your hand and we'll help you. And we'll let all the church know that today, after 12, it is when we're going to start praying every 15 minutes until next Saturday. So, so yeah. So remembering the brothers to be praying for the evangelization that we're going to have for St. Lucy uh, on November 3rd. All the youths and some brothers, they're going to be dislocated to go to this place. And after in December, December 9th, we're going to have our seminar in the same place that we did it before, also in Port St. Lucy. All the church is divided. Alright. Oh yeah. Right there. So every Saturday after service we have fifty minutes of classes for those who want to learn uh, guitar. Yeah. So if any brother wants to to participate but it didn't give the name, so just look for the brother for the brother Antonio or Ronaldo right here the deacons those were responsible so they could put everything in order so you can participate of these classes we say to all peace of the Lord